It has been quite the journey the last few months to completely renovate this little brick house and we've enjoyed having each of you along for this process. This flip house is complete and has been transformed inside and out and is now ready to resell. Today's episode is the final episode in this series and I'll be sharing a final tour of the house and also I will be answering some of your questions about this flip house at the end of the video so stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for following along on this journey and now I hope you enjoy this last episode. Hello everyone and welcome to the final house tour here at the Little Brick house and this is also the 20th and final episode in this renovation series. I had to put Levi in the carrier for this house tour because in the first house tour he was in this carrier just a little one month old baby and so had to put him back in the carrier for this final house tour. So we'll start off with the exterior of this house. The exterior of this home got a complete makeover fresh paint on the brick. We removed all of the old landscaping, added new fascia, painted the fascia, a new roof, a new HVAC unit. Basically everything on the exterior of the house got remodeled. Now we'll walk through the front door. There used to be a huge bush right here in front of the front porch so you couldn't even see the front door. So we just completely removed that. We did these two cute little pink flowers here in front of the wooden posts. A little walkway up to the front door and we'll just go right through the front door and take you inside. When you come through the front door, this view has changed drastically over the last seven months. Before, when you walked in the front door, you were walking right into the kitchen. There used to be an opening right here into the kitchen, and then this wall came over quite a bit further, so we just took this wall back a little bit, closed off this opening into the kitchen, and just made a little entryway area and then now you can see into the living room and the rest of the house when you walk through the front door. This hallway feels so much more brighter and open than it did before with the brighter paint color. We did these little can lights all the way down the hallway, the brand new doors, brand new trim. Basically everything in the entire house was remodeled. So walking here into the main room of the house, this big open room is the kitchen and also the living room. Right here in the middle, there used to be a wall. So you just had this very skinny galley kitchen and then a very dark and dingy living room and kitchen as well. So we just completely took out that wall and we did an island here in the middle of the kitchen. This kitchen feels so much bigger than it did before. We installed new white cabinets from Lowe's and took these all the way up to the ceiling just to help this small room feel even more open. We did new hardware on the doors and all new appliances in the kitchen. This island was a DIY project and then we just had granite countertop installed on top. The name of this granite countertop is Waterfall. It's really beautiful and it's just such a statement right here in the middle of the room. In the middle of the island, we've got a Kraus sink and faucet and then I did have some greenery in here but it died. Before we list the house, I'm just gonna put some faux green in this pot. There is also a dishwasher here on the left side of the island and then you've got the sink cabinet and then the two drawers. I really love this backsplash that we chose for the kitchen. It's an off-white color and it has like a texture to it so it has just a very organic feeling to it and I just added a few wooden accents with the cutting board and the salt and pepper grinder. This is a counter depth bridge from Hisense and quite a bit of room in here considering how small it is, but they've got plenty of storage in here and then also a pull-out freezer in the bottom. Down here on the end is the pantry cabinet. So in here they've got plenty of storage for food from the ceiling all the way down here to the floor. We left all of this exposed brick on this wall right here and just painted it the same color as the other walls. This wall color is Pale Oak by Benjamin Moore. <laughs> Levi wanted to get down and curl around on the ground, but um, I was gonna say I love the unique look that this brick wall gives to the house. And in this wall, you've got two different openings. This first opening right here goes into the dining room. I set up this side of the room as the dining room. We added this beautiful oval table from Castlery with these chairs and it was just the perfect size for this narrow space but this whole room right here was such a drastic transformation there used to be a window in the wall down on the other side of the room lots of exposed brick there was an exterior light on the wall so i'll put some before and after footage right here so that you can see just what a drastic transformation this room was and then i'll show some footage here of the back of the house and the backyard 
we did some rounded steps up to the back door, removed all of the old landscaping, planted a few bushes, did new windows, and then added a little bit of gravel up against the house. We were going to do a patio or something out there, but just didn't end up getting that accomplished. So here's a look at this side of the room. On the other side of the room is the dining room. And then this side over here, I just have it set up as a little reading area, or this could be a little office or something. But this room actually used to go that way a little bit further, but we added a closet for the bedroom that's on the other side of this wall. Now we'll walk back into the living room over here beside the kitchen. And in here, I just put this sectional up against the wall with a rug, coffee table, picture up on the wall, and a tree in the corner. But now that we keep walking through here every day, um, we're kind of thinking that we may have to rearrange things a little bit before we list the house, maybe so that the new owners could see where they could hang a TV on the wall. There is a couple different ways that I could rearrange this room. And then once we posted the living room makeover, there was quite a few of you who said that maybe we should rearrange things a little bit just so that people can see where they could hang a TV up on the wall. So we might do that before we list the house, but this is how I have it set up for now. This is only the second home that I've ever designed, so I'm not a professional at this. I'm still learning how to set up rooms and design them and everything, but this is what I set up in here, just a couple of pillows and a little lamp over here in the corner. This coffee table and the couch are both from Castlery, and then that leather chair that I have over in the corner over in the other room, I might bring that over here when we rearrange things a little bit, maybe put it in this corner or something, but we'll see. So now we'll head back the hallway. Okay, so I'll take you back the hallway here. We've got the water heater closet and then just a storage closet right here. We'll walk over into the first bedroom. There's two bedrooms, one bathroom. And I'm going to stop here and tell you a little bit about the mattress that we have on this bed. A big thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring today's video. I'm going to quickly share with you about their mattresses. We added this queen size Birch Luxe natural mattress here in the main bedroom at the Little Brick House. It is a very high quality, very comfortable mattress. And we did sleep on a Birch Luxe mattress for two weeks before I filmed this just so that I could give you an honest review of our thoughts about this mattress and its comfort. So Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. It is specifically created with breathability, cooling, and support in mind and offers increased airflow and targeted zoned lumbar support. Lumbar supporting and cooling are some of the first things that we noticed about this mattress. My husband is a back sleeper and it really helped to support his back. It just forms to your body. It just really helps to support you while you're sleeping. And also that breathability and cooling is so nice when you're here in hot Southern Arizona. I love that these mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified, meaning that no harsh chemicals are used. So if any of you guys are in the market for a new mattress and this sounds like something that you want to try, you can click my link down below for $400 off your mattress, plus you'll also get two free pillows. And if ordering a mattress online makes you nervous at all, you do get a 100 night free trial with this mattress and also a 25 year warranty. And I forgot to say, shipping is free in the US. It's delivered right to your door. They're super easy to unpackage like you guys saw. We just took it out of the box. I took the plastic off and it just inflated up right away and we put it up on top of the bed platform. So yeah, big thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. And don't forget with my link, you can get $400 off plus two free pillows with your mattress. Okay, so back to the house tour. This is the main bedroom. This bedroom was quite the transformation. There was a lot of exposed brick in here and we did have most of it drywalled over, but I did leave this back wall brick because this is where the bed and nightstands go and I just wanted it to be an accent wall. So I just took that wall color paint and just lightly painted it on this brick. It was a long process and I have all of the details of this bedroom bedroom in the bedroom makeover video so I'll link that down below in case you missed it. This room is basically all new from top to bottom. We've got a new ceiling fan up there. We added a second closet over here to the right side of the bed. That closet used to be out in the hallway and we just closed it off and opened it into this bedroom. This is what the other side of this bedroom looks like and I just love how open 
airy and bright but yet cozy that this room feels. It was such a dark cave before and a very depressing space and I just love how bright and happy it feels in here now. I did add curtains and curtain rods. I took those curtains all the way up to the ceiling just to help the room feel a little bit taller. And over here is the second larger closet so they've got two closets in this room. So now we'll go back out the door down the hallway and right down the hallway you can see into the second bedroom and then here to the right is the bathroom we did extend this bathroom larger so we just eliminated the closet that was on the wall in this second bedroom and use that closet space to make the bathroom bigger so we added a new closet in this second bedroom and that is a walk-in closet i'll show you a little bit closer detail of that here in a minute but first we'll walk into the bathroom the bathroom is still a little bit smaller, but there's a lot more space than there was before. This is where the wall used to be before, so it was a very narrow bathroom. We did a large walk-in shower with a glass sliding door. Took that tile from floor and decor all the way up to the ceiling. I love the matte black finishes in this room. We've got the little niche in the shower wall over here, and then the floor tile in here. I really love how this ties into the wood color and the floor tile and the wall tile. This vanity was from Lowe's and there is a lot of storage in this vanity. They can also roll up towels and put underneath of there or just do some little baskets for storage. And then we did the matte black faucet, the matte black framed mirror. And I like that this mirror has the rounded edges. I did a nice large one just to help this room feel a little bit bigger. And we left the exposed brick back behind these shelves just as an accent, painted that the same color as the wall and then did these wooden floating shelves for storage so they can store towels and baskets with bathroom supplies and everything like that up there. And then down under the bottom shelf, they can put a large laundry basket. Over here in this corner is the toilet and then these two buffalo pictures on the wall. Okay, so let's walk out of the bathroom, turn to the right and head into the second smaller bedroom. Here is that closet that I was talking about down there on that end. We did the same matte black ceiling fan as the other bedroom. This room used to be a dark cave. It was completely all exposed brick. There was an exterior window in this wall that looked into that extra living room space. So that made this room extra dark. The fact that you had no window looking outside. So we eliminated that window, added the walk-in closet, and then we added an exterior window on this wall. We did a sliding barn door for this walk-in closet, and it's just a nice accent for this room as well. Just add something a little bit extra to this wall with the matte black hardware and handle. And this is just the same door as all of the bedroom and closet doors. We just got it in a large size, and it's just a plain slab door. Here is a look in this walk-in closet. That is it for this little house tour. Now we'll head out to the living room and I'm going to answer a few of your questions. So I'm gonna end this video by answering some of the top most frequently asked questions that I've been seeing in the comments of these flip house videos and just kind of cover a couple of things here before we completely close out this renovation series here at the Little Brick House. And I wish that Jalen could be here with me to help finish out this video, but he's currently, at the time of me filming this video, on a trip with two of his brothers. So I do have all three kids with me today. They're back playing in the bedroom. So I'm gonna try to film this quickly because I know that in just a little while, Levi is going to be wanting me. So starting off, the top question was, are we going to do another flip house? Do we already have another one lined up? What's our plans for a future flip house? All of those type of questions. And no, we do not have another one lined up right now. And we are still on the fence as to whether or not we'll do another flip house. We're thinking that we probably will in the future, but right now we just need a break for a couple of months because honestly, we're exhausted. It's been quite the year. We had a new baby at the beginning of this year and then we've been renovating this entire house for this whole year and then we've also had a lot of other stuff going on. So we are not looking to get into another flip house right away. As soon as we sell this one, we'll see how fast this one sells. But that's not to say we won't do another one in the future. We do want to continue investing in real estate and we are keeping our eyes on the market. Nothing has popped up yet, but 
Who's to say if a really good deal pops up in the next couple of months, we might jump on it. But for now, we're just planning to take a break for a little bit and slow down a little bit for the rest of this year. But we would like to hear your opinions down in the comments. Did you enjoy this series? Would you like to see another series like this here on my channel in the future? Just let us know your thoughts down in the comments. So for the rest of this year, we are planning to get back into continuing to work on our home. We have a running list of house projects that we want to work on up there, little renovations and different things like that. We've kind of neglected the projects that needed to get done up at our house and things that we've been wanting to work on this last year just because we've been focusing all of our effort and our money down here at this little brick house. So we're just hoping to continue those renovations up at our house for the rest of this year. And so my every other Saturday video, house projects video, will be up at our home working on projects up there. So I did get a lot of questions around what do we wish we would have done different with this flip house? What did we learn along the way? Just kind of that whole learning experience of it all. We went into this experience as a learning experience. We picked a small house, that way it wasn't too overwhelming. And we just said, we're just gonna try this out, see how it goes, if we don't enjoy it, if it doesn't go well, then we won't continue to do this. But if it does go well and we enjoy it, then we may continue flipping houses. We have learned so much along the way that we can apply to future flip houses. We feel now like we could walk into another flip house with just a much better idea of the whole process and the expenses and what you can actually list a house for, like appraisals and just, there's a whole, there's a lot to learn and we have a lot more to learn throughout this whole experience. I think budget and time is always gonna be your biggest thing when doing a flip house. Um, this one took a lot longer than it should have and we also did go over our budget quite a bit with this house, but we will still profit from this house. It won't be a ton, but that wasn't our main focus going into this. We went into this thinking as long as we profit a little bit, at least it was just a learning experience. We were just trying to get our foot in the door and just learn as much as possible. And also we were able to make a lot of great videos for you guys. Budget is most important. And if you can do some of the work yourself, that's a huge money saver. Demo day is usually something that we can always do ourselves in these future projects. And thankfully Jalen is just so talented in all of this and he was able to do a lot of this work. So that saved us a ton of money in that aspect. But going forward in future flip houses, we honestly are going to try and get a house that the budget will allow for us to not have to do so much of the work. Just because with having a new baby and things, it was just so crazy this last year. We've got a lot of other things going on. My husband has a business and just different things like that. Time is money as well. So the quicker you can get the house done, the better. With us doing a lot of this work ourselves, it did take a lot longer. Sorry if there's a lot of noise. My kids are playing in the room on the other side of this wall and they're starting to get rowdy. So I need to hurry this up. But another big thing that we learned, if you're hiring a contractor, try to get a quote for one lump sum, have a plan ahead of time, a detailed plan. We went into this with somewhat of a plan, but we have a better idea now of if we walk through a future flip house, we can make a detailed plan, a detailed budget, and then we can hire the contractor for one lump sum and one lump job because you are going to save money that way. If you can get your contractor to quote you for everything that you want a contractor to do in that house, in this house it was the roof, AC, just a bunch of different things in this house that we had contractors do. But we had it quoted out as each its own separate job because as we went along, we were like, okay, we're gonna have the contractor replace the roof because at first Jalen was going to do it. And then we decided to have the contractor do it. And then we decided to have the contractor do the drywall work and just, we decided to do these different things throughout the whole process. If we would have just had him come in at the beginning and quote us for one lump sum. Then he could have brought in a big group of guys. They could have got it all done in just a couple of weeks and it would have saved us a lot of money and a lot of time doing it that way. And I also wanted to say that it was a lot of stinking work. Like if it looks like it was all sunshine and roses, it wasn't. There was a lot of stress. We had our fun times too, but it's really hard to do this, especially when you're bringing all three kids down here with you while you're working. That was probably the hardest part. And there were some days where you're trying to get everybody packed up to go and the kids and the tools and everything. And you just don't feel like coming down here and working on the house. Um, but then we had a lot of fun times too. So, you know, there's always going to be that mix, but it's not always easy and fun and everything. So just 
don't think that when you look at these edited videos, like there is a lot of work that goes into this. It's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding work just to see your vision come to life. And real estate is something that we enjoy, just the whole process and planning it out, seeing it all come together, picking out those finishing touches and just bringing everything together is just very rewarding and something that we both enjoy working together on. So that's why we're leaning towards doing more flips in the future but maybe having the contractors do just a little bit more of the work while they're already here, especially all of those little things. We still do want to do quite a bit of the work ourselves and the finishing touches and all of that, but I think that we need a little bit more help next time because like I said, we're exhausted. It was a lot of work this last year and it took a really long time with us doing most of the work. There's probably a lot more questions that I'm forgetting, but I just wanted to do just a brief little sit down here at the end of the video. I don't want it to get too long. I know another top question was if we sold the house yet. And when I'm filming this sit down here, I'm pre-filming this so the house is not on the market yet, but we'll probably share in the future when it sells. We have had quite a few people interested already, even though it is on the market. So Lord willing, it will sell quickly, but we're not gonna stress about it. It will sell when it's supposed to. And I wanted to end this by saying, we appreciate each of you so incredibly much. All of your support throughout this whole process, all of your comments, you all have just been so sweet and so supportive throughout this whole process and just how sweet you've been with each of these reveals and just your encouragement along the way. Your comments did keep us going on days when it was really hard and we'd read through those comments and you guys were just so encouraging and just cheered us along as we went through this renovation and we just really appreciate each of you so much. We will see what the future holds as far as flipping houses, but for now, this one has come to a close and it's a little bit bittersweet, but it's also just a relief as well. And it's going to feel like a weight off of our shoulders once this house sells, but it's still bittersweet at the same time to be here for one of the last times. Levi basically grew up in this house. We started working on this house when he was one month old and now he's nine and a half months old. So there's a lot of memories here. So it's definitely a little bit bittersweet to be selling this house and to be filming my final video here at the Little Brick House. I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you all so much for joining me for the final episode here at the Little Brick House. I can't believe that this is it. This is the last episode. It's crazy. Thank you all for your support during this whole journey and I'll see you in a couple days with a new video. Bye. Okay, so we're gonna start off right here on the little front porch. I should put a, a, a spot can. Grab this and lift it up and there's a toy spider right here and scared the tar out of me. Okay, so we're gonna start putting together kitchen cabinets. I moved Levi's bassinet out here so now he can just lay out here and watch us put together cabinets.